Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look today and my first Bridal Madness Mondays. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoy it and subscribe to my channel. So that way you can see more videos like this. And I do hope you guys enjoy it. I don't normally wear red lipstick, so it is kind of different for me to wear red lipstick. So I'm kind of like, I don't, like, don't want to be like that person, but I'm kind of really liking this red lipstick and this like wing. I may have to do that more often. But I hope you guys enjoy it. And I did not wear foundation. I just want to put that out. I don't remember if I say that in the video. But I didn't wear foundation. My skin is really acting up on me. So I just kind of left that out. But I hopefully, like further future videos, I will be wearing foundation for you guys. So I'll see you in my next video. Let's, let's just get this started. So the first thing that you always want to do when you go and prep your skin for your wedding is you always want to put on some sort of sunblock. Now, I know for me, my wedding is going to be in June, one of the, well, it's pretty darn hot in Indiana, you know, and we definitely have a lot of humidity, and I do burn very easily. So I am going to be protecting myself with sunblock, and I use the Equate SPF Ultra Sheer um, sunblock, and I, use, I always, almost always use something over SPF 50. Like, I don't even use SPF 50. I always use something stronger than that because I find that a lot easier and I don't really have to worry about myself getting burned. And this one is supposed to be, like, oil-free, doesn't clog your pores, so you don't have to worry about that in your wedding day. So, I did apply some lip, lip balm off of camera to go and prep my lips for a very drying lipstick. So then I like to go in with just a moisturizer and you always want to make sure, not just for your wedding day, but you always want to make sure you do have really nice and moisturized and plump skin because good skin care comes with good good makeup comes, starts first with good skin care. So I know with me, I won't be doing any sort of face masks or anything before my wedding. That's for sure. Because I noticed that my skin likes to, for some reason, even though it does say like, you know, non-clogging or for oily and combo skin. It doesn't make a difference on my skin. It always wants to clog my pores. It just doesn't like it. I don't know. But, um, you just want to make sure that you're moisturized and nicely prepped. Now for me, oh gosh, this just feels so nice on the skin. And yes, this one is part of my project pan. Now, for me, my skin, whoops, wrong one. So for me, my skin, it's not it's not cooperating like I expected it to when I was going to this video. So I'm not going to be putting on foundation, but I am going to be putting on a um, luminizing primer <clears throat> that also fills in my pores. So if you guys are like me and are sensitive to primers, you know, wear a nice primer that fills in your pores and makes you look, you know, pretty dewy or whatever is best for your skin type. You know, I am combo to oily, so I am going to be, you know, I can get away with wearing some sort of dewiness, but not too much. And now around my nose, I'm just going to like press it into my skin. And also another good thing, if you have, like, in Indiana, it's just very hot. You know, I have trouble matching myself to foundations. And I've even had people at Sephora to have trouble matching me that I just I just don't want to bother with foundation. So far, so far I don't want to bother with foundation on my wedding. I just would rather do some primer, do a little bit of blush action, and call it a day. And, you know, eyes and everything. Like, that's basically it. So after I do that, I really just want to keep everything very simple and fresh. Um, I'm not going to go with the stereotypical blushing bride, but you can for this look. It's perfectly okay. I'm just going to show you a, I may show you two lip, op lip options if I remember, but I'm going to mostly stick to a lot of cream products that won't budge or go anywhere. So I'm just going to start by taking my, oops, my Maybelline Dream Bouncy Blush and it's in, well, there's no shade because the sticker ripped off. So I'm just going to be going and taking that in with a clean finger. You always want to make sure it's a clean finger. I'm just going to be getting that on my finger, just like so. 
and come on mirror cooperate I'm just gonna be taking it on the apples of my cheeks and just kind of pouncing that in and blending as I go oh, I don't want anything too too like in your face and I know especially for me you know with having skin that doesn't like foundation I always have to have some sort of option so I'm just gonna be doing my other side you always want to make sure you get on the apples of your cheeks and go for that typical blushing bride look so I'm just gonna keep blending this out make sure it is flawless now I think hopefully by next time I film this my skin will be cooperative so maybe I can test out some sort of foundation with my looks because I want to test out some foundation. So another thing that I want to do is I want to go and take some Wet n Wild Mega Glow Master Stick Makeup Stick Highlighter. I'm just going to be taking this on a fin clean finger of course and I'm just going to be taking it just rubbing it around and then placing it on the high points of my cheekbones. So I'm just going to dab right over there for a nice little f emphasis of color. And you can bring it up like so. And you could put it on the nose if you want. I, well, I'm, just, I'm doing it for the video don't normally do that and you can also bring it up the bridge of your nose and if you like you can also put it like above your eyebrows I don't normally do this I'm just doing this for the video I'm just doing the other side and since I did go up I am gonna go up on this side just like that oh, that itch okay so now that my highlight is done, now I, with my highlighters, I like to go for a natural highlight. I don't want something in your face. You know, I do want myself to look like I'm not wearing makeup, but I am wearing makeup, if you know what I mean. Like, n I want to make my skin look airbrushed and like it's my skin, but my eyes can be like completely like wild and crazy. I just want my skin to look like I'm not wearing any face makeup. Because face makeup is not exactly something I, you know, I normally do. Now, if you like to contour, if you want to contour, stick with something that is a cool or neutral tone. Now, since I am a cool toned girl, I do like to go and stick with cool toned kind of um, colors for contour. So yeah, I'm going to be taking this Luxie brush, I mean this crown brush, for contouring. I'm just going to be dabbing into it. Well, I may not pick any product up. It may be too bulky. So I'm just going to be taking whatever I got on my brush. I am going to go into the hollows of my cheekbones since that is my natural shadow. And you can usually tell by the divot. Now if you want to go find your cheekbone, you want to find your jaw. Normally in between, there's like a little divot and you want to just put it right in that hollow. So I like to just go back and forth. And I'm just doing this ever so slightly. I'm not doing anything crazy. I don't want to go and completely sculpt out my face. I am just doing this. Now, if you feel more comfortable of, you know, contouring your jaw, go ahead. I usually just like to do my cheekbones because for, I have a diamond-shaped face and that is appropriate for my face shape. Now, if you guys like to do that, you do you. And... I hope it all works out for your wedding. Now you, this doesn't have to be for your wedding. You can just do this just cause or you want to re recreate this look. You know, it doesn't have to be for a wedding. But this is something, you know, it could be an option, you know. You may have to replace a lipstick, but I'm just going to go into the other side. Now this stuff does, oh, I didn't even tell you what it is. It's a Maybelline, um called it's the Maybelline color tattoo in toughest taupe now that is a really good shade if you're very fair and you're very cool now you don't want to be using bronzer because it will won't give the appearance of a shadow it will give 
more like a bronzed effect and you don't I mean if you want that I don't bronze so that you got to take what you can get type of thing so so I did do my brows off of camera and I did prime my eyes and set them with some translucent powder so we can go and apply some eyeshadow now if you guys like doing your brows I do suggest going with some sort of if you want to keep it with a natural look, I would suggest going with a brow pencil such as the NYX, um, professional, NYX Brow Powder Pencil. And I have the shade Ash Brown. Now, if you want something that's going to lock in all day long through sweat, through tears, through apocalypse, you definitely need the Dip Brow Pomade. This stuff does not move, does not budge. I would, I would definitely recommend it. So, I do have the Ash Brown I do have the next one today just for the sake of convenience and but I do I do know on my actual wedding day I do want to go in with the dip brow because I know it's going to stay a little bit better so I'm going to go and scoot in more so I can go and do my eyes and I will you know close this video up so I am going to be taking my W7 in the mood palette now you can use any sort of neutral natural looking eyeshadow earthy tones really and this is what it looks like. This is a good dupe, I would have to say, for the Naked Basics. So if you have the Naked Basics, use that. Or use any sort of earthy tones that you guys may have. Um, actually, all, the, all of this is drugstore, right? No, no it's not. The primer isn't. So I'm just going to go in closer, and I will definitely, you know, do what I need to do. So I'm going to be actually... Oops. Now this doesn't have a mirror unfortunately, but I am going to be going into this shade right here and I'm just going to be going into the outer V of my eye already. So this is going to be a little bit different, but I'm going to be, you know, testing out the water, see how I like it. So I'm just going to be going into that shade with a fluffy brush and I'm just going to be placing that down. Now I'm not doing something a smidgen different. I'm not going to go into my crease first. I want to try, you know, I want to try and jazz it up a little bit. Oh boy. And I am just going to go and keep building up the color until I am satisfied. And I'm just going in a V motion into the outer edge. And you just want to keep building and building. Next, I'm going to be taking this matte dark, uh, matte dark chocolate brown. I'm just going to be taking that on a angled fluffy brush, and I'm just going to be putting that also into the outer V as well. But when I put that in the outer V, I am going to be focusing it right just on the outer, outer edge. That way it defines the eye. Kind of putting it in a half moon kind of crescent. Just laying down that color. Just like that. Now it does look a little scary because it doesn't look blended, but we will definitely blend it out. Don't you guys worry. So going back into that crease brush, whatever we have left, we will use and blend that out. Just in a back and forth motion. And maybe change it up into a windshield wiper. Just going into that hollow and blending that out. And just keep going until you are satisfied. Now, I do feel like we did kind of lose the taupey color, so we're going to go back with the same fluffy brush and go back into that shade. And I am just going to go and put it right on the middle of my lid just to kind of blend everything together. 
Now as you can see I did not put a crease color in so I'm just going to go and just blend anything I have left on my brush kind of in the crease kind of so next I'm going to be going into this black shade with a what is this called a defining eye brush I'm just going to be going into that just barely picking it up on the brush and just tapping, of course, off the excess. Whew, don't need a black eye on your wedding day. That would be very bad. And I'm just going to be pressing that very, like, dabbing just the outer V. I mean, like a miniature V. Just to kind of give it the nice flow, so to speak. Okay, so now that we placed the color where we wanted to, I'm going to go and take another brush, the fluffy brush we have, and I'm just going to go and go back and forth to kind of soften up that area, but not try and lose the black that we just put down. And so you're just going to keep softening until everything is blended. Now I'm not going to take it all the way into the crease, I'm just going to focus this on the outer edge and maybe go back and forth to kind of change up the direction to maybe further help blend it out. And uh, you want to make sure that in between every single step you're always blending. You don't want to you don't want to go into your wedding day or any day of the week where you're not blended. So Make sure you're always, always, always blending. That is the key to making it look flawless and natural as possible. Even if you, you know, even if you're going for a bold look, you always want to make sure you're always blending. That is importante, rule book number 101 of eyeshadow. You need to blend. It is important and it's crucial for everything to turn out right. So just blend your life away. It's pretty much what it is. That is pretty much what it is, honestly. Now to further help things blend, I am going to go into the middle taupey shade and I'm just going to ever so slightly run that through the crease to go and give a nice tie everything together. And I'm not going to do it so much, just a little bit, just to tie and further blend everything together. Just to make sure everything is cohesive and working in one big symphony. So I am going to be going into this shade right here. I'm just going to be taking that on my finger. I'm just going to be putting that onto my inner portion of the lid and taking that onto the brown bow and as well. So I'm just going to lightly, and then when you get to the, or meets with the black, you just want to go on press and make sure that's all blended. I'm just going to take my finger to do it. And just put at the high point points of my brow bone to make sure that looks like it gives your brow bone, brow bone a nice lifted effect. And that's very, very important. Now, if you wanted to do anything further, you can go and take a shimmery, anything shimmery, and just take a little bit on your finger. Or a lot, well, depends on how much your finger picks up. And you can just plop it on the inner portion of your lid inner portion of your eye and the tear duct area that will really give it like an eye opening effect to make it look like you're white light wide awake jeez louise i'm not wide awake i'll tell you that much it'll give it this nice and it'll focus all the light on your eyes it'll look very very stunning especially on your wedding day you definitely need something like that so i am going to be trying to do a wing but i'll do that off of camera just in case i screw up and you know i don't need to screw up on camera but before I get into it, a really good tip I can give you is we want to make sure you match up with your uh, the outer edge of your eye. That way you'll just draw up from that. It'll give you a nice crisp line and it'll also look good for your eye shape. You don't want to go like out like this or like whoop. You always want to make sure you follow that outer edge. So go straight up from there and bring it in. And it gives you a nice, nat not natural, but it gives you a nice wing that looks good with your eye shape. So I am going to be going in with this really bold, neutral to cool red lipstick in the shade Feel So Grand, right? 
feels so grand. I'm just going to be putting that on really quickly off of camera. And this is the completed look. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Bye.